Hi, and welcome to Val's Visions and Designs. Ready to make another pumpkin wreath. And this year, after I learned a few things from last year, I decided that I would try it a little bit differently. So I have one pumpkin frame that was actually a fail of another attempt. And I'm still gonna use the frame because it's gonna go on the bottom. But what I've got this year is two frames. Now, one I have painted like an off-white and then the top one I have painted orange. So instead of using such a thin mesh, I decided this year to go with a poly burlap. So I have 21 inch poly burlap um, that I have doubled because what I wanna do is actually put a little more design into this one, but the beginning stages are gonna be pretty much the same. So I'm going to put my burlap poly burlap over this first frame and try to make sure I have it straight and then bring down the one that I painted orange. I know when I made the other one last year, I didn't like having the darker color show um, underneath. So that's why I painted it like a light color. So I'm gonna go just go ahead and grab the sides and go under and make these two together, bring them together with a zip tie. And I'm just going in and around. And I actually think after I get this piece in, I'm gonna flip it over. Because I think it's actually easier to do this when you're upside down with it. So I'm just gonna attach several zip ties. And of course you really wanna squeeze it tight. So I'm gonna do the two sides, I think first. Make sure I've got it going in the right way. And I hope that the poly burlap will be a little bit sturdier. And I always hate having to use two frames, but really there's not a lot of strength in one frame by itself. Um, it's something I kind of learned last year. Um, they they, they kind of get fragile if you get too much weight on them. So I knew the poly burlap was much heavier. Come back here. So I decided to go ahead and use the two frames again. So I'm just going to connect these all together. And I'll link my last one that I did for you uh, last year to this video as well, because I'm not going to do all of the steps again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fasten this and then I'll pull the uh, burlap down and glue it. So let me go ahead and work on that part and then I'll be back. All right, so for the most part, that went pretty good. Now, poly burlap really does like to fray, so I kind of left a little bit of the overhang uh, around it just to help keep it from maybe um, fraying so bad. I didn't think about this part of it. Uh, let me. So I'm just kind of tapping a little bit of glue uh, around some of these little edges just so that won't, you know, continue to ravel. And I think also. Oops, I may come back in with just a, tat, a, a little bit of Mod Podge because I don't want this hot glue to show through. Um, but I think it's got a real pretty coverage. Now let's see, I added zip ties. One, let's see, it might be easier to come this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. I did put one right here, seven and eight. Looks like I did eight zip ties. So I am going to go around the border after I get the center complete. But what I wanted to do this year, I've got two different strands of two and a half, two different rolls of two and a half inch ribbon. Um, this one is item number X91494-21. Um, this is the pumpkins in the buffalo plaid. Uh, this comes from Craft Outlet. And then I also have this one, which has a little bit more sparkle to it. Um, this one is item number 61004-40-21. So what I thought I would do is put the ribbon around the sections that I had added yarn to in the past. So, of course, I got that one upside down. I got to make sure I keep my pumpkins going in the right direction. 
So now my dilemma is which one to go with because I like them both. I think I kind of like the glitter just a little bit more because I always tend to like glitter. So um, I'm thinking that that's the one I'm going to use is the glitter. It just depends on how much you want the buffalo check. Um, to be more prevalent. I love how orange and buffalo check look together. So I am kind of leaning more towards this. And then once I kind of get it glued into the frame, I know that my border that I put around it will actually cover that up. So I think I'm going to just glue a strip right across this part of the pumpkin and then glue a strip right down the middle and then glue the strip right over here. So let me see if this idea is going to work, guys, and I'll be right back. All right, let me just show you how I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to keep enough of the material, I didn't do too good on the first one, to wrap around that frame just a little bit. So right here where this uh, stem is, I just kind of cut a little hole in it, kind of like a little uh, groove right down the middle where I could kind of squeeze around that stem and I'm going to go ahead and glue this right here and I like having it wrapped over the frame just a little bit um, that way again I know it's going to get caught uh, when I go around and add the um, border to it with either yarn rope I hadn't quite decided if I want to do yarn or rope and then all I'm doing is putting on, and I don't like how that one just laid. I want it to be a little further over. Back that one back off real quick. I'm really trying to keep it more centered. Maybe if you just kind of fold that little piece right there. Yeah, I think that works better. So I'm just going to fold that little corner so it tucks in there a little bit neater because I want to be able to keep my ribbon centered right down the frame. And all I'm doing to do the, to actually glue the ribbon is I'm just, is just doing a bead of glue right on the ribbon directly on the sides. And then just straighten it out and laying it out. It glues on nice and smooth. And then I'm going to bring it down here and here I'm not going to be as concerned about it going over the bars because I don't think there's going to be any way to avoid that. I'm just going to bring it over. I love the sparkle. I think this is going to be so pretty. So I'm just cutting my pieces with a little extra on them to be sure I have a little bit to loop over the top. And of course, you're going to go through a lot of glue. I like my little glue gun because it has a low heat setting. I think when I did this last year, all I had was a high temp glue gun and uh, I kept getting burned doing this. So the low temp is definitely much easier. And then I love these little pink clips um, that Dollar Tree sells. They fit over this so nice and tight. The little pink things come off of them sometimes, but they still work. So this piece kind of looks a little sad. Let me give it a little bit more glue. There we go. I do love how the poly burlap is holding up. It's giving it a nicer, um, thicker, and almost a tighter feel than what the other mesh did that I used last year. So uh, I think I'm going to like this a lot. So I've got one more area to do. So again, I'm just kind of measuring my piece a little bit longer than what I need. So I can wrap it around the edge. This is gorgeous ribbon. So pretty. So this piece, of course, is going to be right here. And I'm just going to try to get it, as, get it as centered as you can because you're going to have the spokes in there just a little bit. 
uh, no matter which way you go. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue right here on this edge. I'm going to flip it over and get it placed how I want it. I'm going to go a little further over. And I'm just going to bring it as smooth as I can, knowing that it's not going to be exactly perfect, but I think it'll line up pretty nicely. So again, I'm just putting my glue right on my ribbon. And this time I'm going to try to tuck it just a little bit. Kind of up under this edge. Of course, I just got hot glue on it, so of course I'll have to take that back off. Um, I do think painting the bottom um, pumpkin was a good idea as well, because it's not as noticeable that it's got the dark um, color coming through. So I'm just going to tighten it and try to get it as smooth as I can. Wrap it around and cut off that little bit of excess. I know I'm wasting some ribbon, but I'd rather waste a little bit and have a nice tight fit. So grab my clips and put my clips on here to hold them. And this piece has got a lot of excess on it. And then I'm just going to check on the front um, to make sure that there's not anywhere that I might need to tap a little bit more glue. And then just kind of press it down. If you had the 21 inch burlap, I think that would work as well. Probably would work even a little bit better. Um, I don't know which one is more economical, the burlap or the poly burlap. Um, I just prefer not to work with burlap if I don't have to. And then I'm just kind of pushing these little pieces kind of up underneath the little bar. So there's stage two. Uh, I think this is gonna work, guys. So um, I'm gonna decide what, I know that I wanna make the, um, extend the frame out again because I like doing that much better. Um, then I did not extending it, the, uh, the uh, stem. So I think I'll probably do the tin foil again. And then again, like I said, I've got to decide what's going to look the best bordered. That's when I wish it, this was live so I could get y'all's opinions <laughs> as to what would look better bordered around it. Um, like I said, I'm thinking between uh, orange yarn or... Um, the jute rope that you get from Dollar Tree. So let me play around with it some guys and I'll be back. Okay guys, so after all of my options, um, I had this, I wanna say this is metallic copper uh, tubing and I know I got it from Craft Outlet last year. It's either metallic or it's the burgundy and gold. I couldn't quite tell. But I love how it sparkles up against this. And of course, it's going to be the narrowest of my options. So what I did was I cut three pieces and I braided it together to give me just a little bit more uh, surface coverage. So if you can see right here how pretty this is going to look. It pulls, it matches with the glitzy of the oranges in here. So, of course, naturally, I always have to go with the most complicated one. So, I've just braided a, a, a nice big strand of it um, and to make it, you know, maybe to keep from having to do it twice because um, I was trying to figure out a way to make it thicker. Uh, that was my goal. Sorry, I'm all out of the shot. I love making these pumpkins. Um, you know, you always try to come up with a way to improve on your you know, what you originally did. Um, 
like I said, I just, I knew I learned a lot from some of the ones I made last year, um, some ideas to help make it a little bit better this year. Um, so I am just doing the border. Um, and again, I think it's gonna look really pretty. I'm hoping I can only go around here one time. I may have to come back in um, with one more row. If I come back in with one more row, I don't think that I'll braid it again. I'm not sure because it, it is a little time consuming. Um, it doesn't make it really a lot uh, thicker. It just makes it a little bit prettier. It kind of pops a little bit better. So again, I'm, I think it was uh, the, either the metallic copper or it's the burgundy and the gold, but I did check on Craft Outlet and of course it's out of stock. But you could do this with uh, the black tubing, uh, plain orange tubing. Uh, you could do the jute rope. I just loved, naturally, again, that this just had a little bit of glitz to it. Because uh, I love a little bit of glimmer and a little bit of glitz. And I just think that's going to be really pretty. But I can't almost tell I'm going to have to do two rows. So I hope I have enough of it. Um, I've just about gone all the way around at once, so um, I'll probably do it twice because y'all know I'm also a perfectionist. I like everything to just look just perfect. Um, so this could be time consuming, so um, I'll come back and let you see how it looks when I'm done. I am absolutely loving how this one is coming out. So I did go back around and add one more row of the... Um, copper, coppery colored um, tubing. And then I loved it so much, I decided I'm gonna do the stem. So I'm doing the extension on the stem uh, with just a piece of tin foil. And then again, I braided these pieces. Kind of the easiest way I've been finding to braid them is to do a zip tie around the ends. And now that I've actually got this one glued in here, I'm just kind of braiding it as I go. I mean, I'm not making it super tight, but, you know, tight enough that it looks like a rope. Uh, and then just gluing it around the piece of tin foil. Now, this worked last year, so I'm just assuming that it'll work again this year um, to do this rope up around this tin foil. I think last year, though, I used jute rope, but I thought since this is already so pretty and coppery, that I was just gonna continue with that pretty copper look all the way up. So that's where I'm going with that. Um, I think I'll go ahead and do a bow. And uh, I think I'll use um, the ribbon that I used in here. And uh, then I have a couple of other little ribbons. I have this one that's actually really pretty with the fall leaves and the uh, check buffalo check in that as well, so I may use that one. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just gluing along, um, kind of braiding it as I go. Now before I braided the entire stem, uh, before I got started, and then this was just kind of an afterthought because I actually had some of it left, and uh, I stopped about right here at the top. So I thought, well, you know, might as well. Let's just keep it going all the way up. So it's, you know, it's not super pretty on the back. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure that I love this zip tie sitting right there, but uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do. At least I'm gonna, I think this is what I'm gonna do. So I'll be back. Okay, the tubing did not like the tin foil, so that I didn't, didn't go, didn't go well. Um, so is either do it with the rope or stop on the metal. So I decided to stop on the metal. Now I was trying to remember about how big the bows were I made for these last year, because I don't want to go crazy on the bows. So um, I'm thinking maybe about a five inch loop is kind of what I was thinking about. Let me see, let me get this over here. So I think I'm gonna leave only about, uh, let's see, eight inch tail maybe. And I'm gonna do two five inch loops with this beautiful ribbon, guys. This is such a pretty, pretty ribbon. Um, 
because I don't want it to overwhelm it. I haven't decided if I'm going to add any of the uh, fall picks to it yet or not. Um, I've got some left over from last year, but this being so sparkly and so pretty, I just don't know. Uh, I'll have to look in my stash and see if I have anything that's really sparkly and really pretty. Um, so, I, and you could also just add a little bit of buffalo check to this bow. That would be super pretty. Um, but I think I might uh, see how this looks and then I'll decide if I think I need to find something else to add to it. Um, you really couldn't see all of the, the leaves that much before for the bow. All right, so there's two loops at five. Sure, let me cut the tail. And of course, I don't have my good scissors because I only pulled these out for ribbon. So let's do two loops of this one. And then I do think I want to add one loop of this pretty um, with the fall leaves. Let's see, the item number for this one is 61030-09-21. Uh, it's got the glitter and the uh, buffalo check in it, so I thought this would be really pretty. And I know my pumpkins are going upside down, coming down, but you know what? I'm just not going to worry about them being upside down. Uh, I, I, I don't want to have to piece this ribbon to, to death. All right, so I think I'm just going to do, hmm, do I want to do more than one? If I don't put a lot of fall leaves in it, I might do more than one. Let me think on this. Let me check my loops. I think these are probably right around four inches. Let's see, I'm probably about, yeah, these are probably about four You know, I'm going to stop with the one because I think that should be plenty. I just love all this glittery ribbon. I could just go crazy with this. Um, so I've got two of the goldish pipe cleaners. These are the ones that come from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to tie these together. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how much of this I'm going to need because I usually make my hanger out of it as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this out. Wrap this around it. So yeah, just a simple bow. And then I'll do my uh, dovetails after I decide where I want to cut them. So I'm just going to kind of fluff it in my hand. Get everything shifted around how I want it to lay. I always have a hard time making small bows. <laughs> I guess I'm so used to making big bows. When I come to making a small bow, it's like, that looks so scrawny. But I think it's going to look fine on the pumpkin. So let's just take a look and see how this is going to do. We tie it around the stem. And that's what I did last time. I just used the stem is where I tied it tight and then I made this also into my hanger and uh, last year I used a uh, Dollar Tree ribbon and this is not Dollar Tree ribbon so it's definitely got a lot more substance I'm sorry guys I keep getting out of the camera um, almost looks like it might be too big I don't know. That might not be too big. I think that looks pretty. What do you guys think? Now, I, like I said, I'm not sure uh, if I'm going to add anything else, if I'm going to add a little sign, um, but I think this pumpkin is dazzling. I love all the bling in it. I think it's turned out really pretty. Um, so I may have to play around with it a little bit more, but I'll take some final pictures of it, and I hope this is giving you some inspiration for fall. Bye, guys.